and welcome back to Sarah's Music. Today we're up above the skyscrapers in New York on the roof of Carnegie Hall in the Resnick Education Wing where there's a really cool project taking place. Music education is really important to Carnegie Hall. Carnegie's Weill Institute produces an extraordinary range of music education and community programs for young people of all ages, from small children to music students from all over New York City, and all from very different social backgrounds. Andrew Carnegie planned for this rooftop terrace over a century ago, and now it's reality as part of the Resnick Education Wing. It's a fantastic spot and also a great new home for music education in New York. It's great that big stars from the classical music world, such as the famous mezzo-soprano Joyce Di Donato, come to Carnegie to give masterclasses. Here, she's helping a young singer prepare for a role in Mozart's opera Don Giovanni. Why? Okay. Okay. And you don't know it's coming. That's this, there's, there's this fabulous eighth note rest. Mm -hmm. In quali eccessi o nomi. In quali eccessi o nomi. In quali mi sta più remedi tremendi. How bad is that tremendi? Really bad. It's horrible. Horrible. You're wonderful. Thank it's you so, so good much. to hear this in your voice, really. Beautiful. This is the main music space of the Resnick Education Wing, and I'm here with Christopher Amos from the Wild Music Institute. Chris, this space is incredible. We're way up in, amongst the pigeons up here at Carnegie Hall. What happens up here? Well, the Education Wing is the home of Carnegie Hall's Wild Music Institute, so it serves a wide range of music education and community programs for the hall. That includes work with very young children and families, um, school children from throughout New York City, uh, young artists, and young professionals. It's the most amazing space for education. It's a, real, it's a real calling card for what Carnegie Hall wants to say how important music education is for them. I mean, 230 million, the renovations, 24 rooms. It took four years to create? Yes, it did. And it's allowed us to bring together all of our education programming, which happens throughout New York City, and bring many of those programs into the building. And as you have seen today, uh, we serve a wide range of people. And it's wonderful to see when those different groups of people have an opportunity to connect. So to have a member of the Berlin Philharmonic coming to work with young hip hop producers has just been a fantastic It's experience. been exactly the other way around for me. To, for me to be able to, a, a Berlin film musician who would never play hip hop otherwise, it's been incredible. And I, I got the feeling the kids are really proud to come here to the Carnegie Hall. You know, it's, 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 it's a luxury to have your education space in the hall. It is, and it's, uh, it, it's fantastic space. It is the, the highest quality education space. Well, I mean, just and the view for a start. Stunning. <laughs> I'm really excited because I've been invited to take part in Carnegie Hall's digital music production workshop for students between the ages of 13 and 19 here in the education wing. They told me to bring my horn. I don't really know what else is going on, but I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, we're going to get a little warmed up. You can stand up. We'll get into the <laughs> organic orchestra, as we like to call it. Uh, I'm gonna split you guys up into sections. And I think we're gonna start off a little up-tempo today. Okay. And now it's my turn. I've been asked to talk a bit about my horn. 
basically, you have that, you have a mouthpiece. So you can play also playing that, does it just sound so good? You put it in the horn, you use a lot of air, and out comes a note, if you're lucky. You need to coordinate lips, tongue, air, fingers, uh, brain, yeah. If I unrolled the horn, it would probably be about twice as long as this, but, but that's basically all it is. Here, hold it up. You just have to put a mouthpiece in. Help I've me. been recording for years and years and You've I've never, never recorded a garden hose. Or this is probably never going to happen again. Okay, you've been recording for years and years, but that was, have you ever tried to get a noise out of a garden hose? No. Okay, here we go. Oh. <laughs> No, that's singing, that's not for you. Just as if you're spitting. Yeah, well, we're gonna work on that. The French horn can be a pretty cool instrument, and I think if that's okay with you guys, I would love to do some sampling with you and see what you can what you can do out of the French horn. I would love to hear that. bit of the Mozart maybe oh, you just yeah. want to put a little bit of the Mozart in there somewhere yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? we try it just just if you t if you record it then we just Workshop participants split into small groups and take my Mozart and Star Wars samples with them. I wonder how that's going to turn out. While the mixing is going on, I talk to Matt and Pudge from Building Beats, Carnegie's partner for this workshop. Pudge, Matt, that was so much fun to be a part of your masterclass or workshop. Thank you. Um, it was, I felt like the most uncool person in the room with these kids who are used to sampling digital music. Where, where do the kids come from? Where, where, where do they come from and how, how do they get here apart from practice, practice, practice? Right. Um, <laughs> well, some of them, some of the TAs, the teacher assistants, and we work at other sites. And I know some of the kids go to Clinton High School. Um, we had, I'm not sure if we have any today, but some of them come from a probation, um, I guess, situation where they're in, they're, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but some of them are transitioning out of probation and back into like regular school systems and school structures, and they found out through the TAs and through other friends. And you say uncool, I say you might have convert. <laughs> you have people, you know, question, wondering about the classical a little bit more. The questions yeah. they were asking were great, and. You know, they you were, made it fun. They so. were fantastic kids, but what you do with them, I mean, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of work. You coming, you're classically trained, right? I was so you can trained. you can bring that also into the into the workshops with the with the you about keys and and yeah. and all that stuff. Do you find you need your classical training to do to be able to do these workshops? Because I think there's a lot of versatility in classical music, and you know, there's certainly um, sampling that they can grab from any piece of music that they they they've been. So to have the education is really great. It always helps, but it's certainly not necessary. A lot of people don't know what a major scale is, don't know what a minor scale is. But, but does they it really hear matter? it doesn't matter. No. They hear what they like and they're able to compose immediately. But what do you take away from these workshops? Oh, um, aside from the it's a little selfish to say, the most rewarding thing I get is actually what I learn from them. You know, some of the questions they ask, some of the things that I'm like, wow, I would have never asked that. I would have never thought to ask that when I was that young. You know, it makes me approach my music differently. So, so it's great. It's the coolest thing that happened today was just playing that little bit of Mozart just now. And there were two kids that came in that weren't there at the beginning, so they'd missed all of that. Mm -hmm. And the big guy there, I heard him say, he turned to his friend, he said, cool, that was sweet. <laughs> and I was like, yes. Right. Okay, guys. okay here we go. Let's see what they've produced. My mother's gonna be proud. 
Remember when you were t like you played the horn, then you were talking? We could cut that up. We sampled your vocal first, then put it in the song. Then we sampled that the costs horn. extra. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Who did this? Who did this one? All of them. I love it. I love it. Yo, 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 yo. Every day on Saturdays, I wake up bumping music, listening to beats and the flow sounds amusing. I catch the ill vibe like Tip and Buster, word the mother. Pink Rock and CL Sue smokes, whole brothers. <laughs> it's good, it's good, it's good, I love it. It's good. We love it.